is continuous. So that such as education, 10 years education, uh, 11, 12, so on and so forth. Could it be 11.5, 11.4, so on and so forth. Now, a dummy variable is a case when xi only takes value zero or one. For example, say gender. Say if you're male, say zero or one. So if you're really a male worker, then takes value one. Otherwise, uh, zero. Basically, true or false. Are you a male worker or not? Similarly, married or not. So zero or one also means a true or false, married or not, right? So could be, uh, say, the location or, say, union membership. Do you own a car or not? Married or not? Basically, yes, no, those are those kind of questions. So, so that's why we call it a dummy variable because it's different from the traditional continuous one. So it's like a fake variable. That's why we call it a dummy variable. So dummy right here means a fake, doesn't mean stupid or something. <laughs> so, <laughs> by the way, uh, that's why whenever my wife calls me a dummy, I assume uh, she means I'm a zero one distributed. <laughs> uh, what's different about a dummy variable? Uh, it's different and also actually sometimes easier. Uh, sometimes easier. Actually, sometimes formula will be different. For example, let's see. When our x takes value zero or one, first of all, how do we interpret the coefficient of beta? Very simple. Since x only takes value zero or one, only two cases, let's plug them in. For example, if you plug in x is zero, plug in zero right here, y equals to alpha plus Beta times zero, of course, is zero, right? Ignore ignore EUI because the expectation will be zero. So that basically the expectation Y is alpha plus beta times zero, basically is, a, is alpha only, right? Similarly, if you plug in X to be one, then expectation Y will be alpha plus beta times one, which is alpha plus beta, right? So again, the UI's expectation is a zero, so because centered at a zero. So that's why we don't have UI anymore. So the difference between these two equations, in other words, the second equation minus the first equation, the difference will be right-hand side. Alpha and alpha, they canceled out. So right-hand side, we have a beta only, right? Left-hand side, it's the second one minus first one. So left-hand side is this right here. The difference between the, the two is our beta, right? So that's the meaning of beta. Let's take a closer look. For example, suppose y is weight. Suppose x is a dummy variable male. Uh, that doesn't mean male is a dummy. <laughs> male, uh, you, you can call it male dummy. <laughs> but anyway, suppose this is a regression wage over male, right? So what are these two equations? The first one is male equals to one. In other words, really male workers, right? The expectation for of wage for male workers. Second one, expectation of wages for female workers, right? Their difference is beta. Let's take a closer look. In other words, the first equation right here, this is the basically roughly speaking, it's uh, the average wage of male workers, of uh, female workers. Second equation, the average wage for male workers, right? And then finally, the difference between these two equations, that's the beta. Beta will be basically the <laughs> wage difference between male and female, right? <laughs> and that's basically the idea, the coefficient of a dummy variable. As for example, if your X is male dummy, then beta will be the wage difference between male and female. If X is say a dummy variable stand for black or white, then that's the wage difference between black and white, right? If X is a married or not, then that's the coefficient beta will be the dif wage difference between married or not, right? So on so forth, basically between the two groups, the difference between those two groups. That's a simple idea. So some examples, uh, for example, say, first of all, if we have gender, if we have gender, 
Then actually, if you like, we we have two different ways to 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 create such a dummy variable. In other words, if you like, you can create a male dummy. So we run a regression income over male dummy, right? You can run such a regression. Similarly, actually, if you like, you can generate the other dummy variable, which is a female dummy variable, right? If this worker is female worker, then if this is true, then it's female dummy is one, right? So on so forth, opposite. So that you can you can use a female dummy and run the second equation instead, right? So we have two options. Either use a run the first regression model or the second regression model, right? So what I want to show you is actually, you know, between these two different regressions, actually, the betas right here. The betas from these two regression models, so they are almost uh, basically the same as each other. They only differ by a negative sign. In other words, for example, suppose the first regression model, the beta right here is positive 10. Then the second regression right here must be negative 10. And must be in that show. Why? Let me illustrate this way. For example, for example, you know, from the first regression model, from the first regression model, beta is a wage difference between male and female, right? For example, let me draw, let me draw a graph. Um, and draw a line. And uh, um, rectangle. Something like this. For example, for example, say suppose suppose the coefficient right here is 10. Suppose my alpha is I say 50. Then based on the way we just discussed, plug in male dummy is a zero, plug in male dummy is, a, is one. So then plug in zero right here, then male is a zero. In other words, not a female worker, right? In other words, for female workers. For female workers, if you plug in zero right here, income is 50, right? In other words, the height of this bar basically is, is 50 right here. There's an A. Let me, let me, let me type uh, somewhere right here. So the height of this bar will be 50, right? Then the second bar will be for male workers. For male workers, if you plug in one right here, Income is 50 plus 10, right? Male workers, the wage or income is 50 plus 10, which is a $60, right? That's basically the corresponding relation. If you got alpha is 50, if your beta is 10, then the corresponding graph will be right here. I, I, I'm trying to draw a bar chart right here, <laughs> although not that perfect. So female, the bar, the height is 50. The male, the height of the bar chart is a 60, right? So the difference, the male minus female, the difference right here, you know, will be 10, right? The, the second bar is $10 higher than the, the first one, right? That's the difference. So if that's the, you know, fact, then you run the regression the other way around. If you run the regression, the, when you use a female dummy, then the corresponding regression numbers, the, the second regression numbers right here, the coefficient of beta right here must be negative 10, negative 10. And uh, alpha right here must be 60. Why? Because from by using the female dummy, basically you are using the other way around. Basically you compare female, compare them to, to, to male. Then how much lower female compared to ma male? In other words, for female dummy, then plug in zero and one. If you plug in zero right here, income, then you plug in zero, female is a zero. It means really male workers, right? Male workers, their income based on the chart must be 60. That's why intercept alpha right here must be 60, right? If you plug in one right here, if female is really true, female is really true, 60 minus 10, right? <laughs> and so the difference will be 50 right here, right? So female, 
income is 60 minus 10. So you you also got a 50 right here, right? So so by you know for either from the first equation or the second equation, the only the benchmark is different. The first way you are trying to compare male compared to female, how much dollar higher? Of course, the answer is ten dollars higher, right? It means uh, male, the right, second one compared to the first one, how much taller? The answer is ten dollars higher, right? If you use a second equation, it's female compared to the other one, compared to male, how much lower? Right here, answer is ten dollars lower, right? Female, this first bar is ten dollars lower than the second one, right? That's why I'm what I'm trying to say is that. Uh, these two equations, basically, in essence, they must be the same. The coefficient of beta, they must be the same in terms of absolute value. If the first one give you positive 10, the second one must be negative 10, because, because the facts, for example, they are 50 and a 10. Then the first one basically trying to figure out the, you know, the, the first one, male, how much dollar higher than female? Answer is $10 higher than the second one, right? The other one, the second equation, basically trying to tell female compared to male, and, you know, is how much lower, right? It's $10 lower, right? The difference is just $10. And the only difference is which one you use as a benchmark to compare with, right? The first one says male is $10 higher than female. Second one says female is $10 lower than male, right? In essence, of course, uh, the difference is just $10. Uh, it only just uh, depends on which one you use a benchmark to compare with, $10 higher or lower, uh, right? So that's why that's why no matter which one you use, the diff, you know, the beta must be the same, but they only differ by a negative sign. If, so, if the first one is positive 10, the second one must be negative 10, right? <laughs> So that's the corresponding relationship. Basically, no matter you use a male dummy or female dummy, in essence, actually, no difference. We're going to get exactly the same results. Uh, so that's why in practice, whichever you like to use, you can either use a male dummy or female dummy, whichever. You're going to get basically the same results. Uh, As we mentioned just now, you can either use male dummy or female dummy, but do not use both. In other words, don't run such a regression model. If someone run a regression model, alpha, beta one times male, beta two times female, if you use they two together, this is an incorrect model. Don't do this in practice. What's wrong with uh, this regression model? What's wrong with this, this regression model? The short answer is that this regression model, this regression model cannot be identified. Why? <laughs> All of you guys are answer basically on red track. I'll give you a little bit of hint. For the multivariate regression in this chapter, we introduce a new assumption, right? This new assumption is that no perfect multi uh, perfect multicollinearity <laughs> case right what's perfect multicollinear case it's something like x1 equals x2 or x1 equals 2 times x2 or x1 plus x2 equals a constant something like that right right here i will show you actually male and a female they two basically will be in the case of a perfect multicollinearity case yep Exactly. <laughs> I will show you actually, male plus female always equals to a constant one. Male plus female must be always equal to constant one. Let me illustrate, it's really, really simple. For example, suppose, suppose we have a data set. If you want to uh, code your, uh, your data set, for example, so suppose the first worker is a, is a male worker, then the male dummy variable must be one right here, right? And because uh, basically male, it is true. It is, it is really a male worker. If this worker is really a male worker, then the female, female dummy must be 
must be false. It must be zero right here, right? <laughs> so second worker, oops, what did I do? Second worker, suppose, suppose the second worker is a female worker, right? Then the male dummy is false. So right here must be zero, right? Not true. And the female dummy variable right here must be true, right? So on so forth. In other words, so on so forth. Similarly, for example, the third worker suppose is a male worker. There must be one here and uh, zero right here, right? And so on so forth. So, so that uh, so that you can check out the data set. If your data set, if you if you have one right here, the female right here must be zero, right? If if this is a zero right here, female must be one right here, right? And in other words, if it is true, if this worker is really a male worker, then cannot be a female worker. If this worker is a female worker, then cannot be a male worker, right? So on so forth. Must must be one or zero or zero one, so on so forth, right? <laughs> so that so that the summation of these Z2, either one plus zero or zero plus one. The summation of the two must be always equals to one, right? <laughs> so basically, basically male plus female, the summation of my x1 and x2, summation always sums up to be one, right? In other words, what's wrong with uh, this kind of equation? This equation, if you like, you can you can re rewrite this equation as alpha plus times one and plus beta beta one times male plus beta two times female, right? So that among male, female, and the constant one, they three, actually they are in perfect linear relationship, right? <laughs> so that um, so that male plus female always equals to the constant one. Among these three, as long as you know two of them, the, the third one must be, you know, you know the answer, right? That's why they three, one of them is redundant. <laughs> we can, you know, two of them is already enough. We don't we don't need the third one, right? That's why either use alpha and male or alpha plus as a beta times female, but do not put all three of the together. If you include all three together, we we violate the no perfect multicollinearity assumption, right? <laughs> Basically, it's a redundant. The um, you know between the two, one of them is redundant. You don't have to, right? So the textbook call a different name. The textbook call it dummy variable trap. Dummy variable trap. What's the dummy variable trap? It's, it's exactly the same as our perfect multicollinearity problem. It's simply the perfect linear problem in case of a dummy variable. That's all. So the textbook use a different name, dummy variable trap, to, to you know for, for this case. It's exactly the same thing of our you know, assumption number five. Right. So short answer is uh, either use male dummy or use female dummy, but don't use the two together because they two together always for male plus female always equals to one. Right. Uh, if you, as we mentioned just now, if you really put both of them to computer, if you ask computer run the regression income or both of them, computer gonna automatically drop one of them for you. Computer basically says it's redundant to to include both of them, right? Computer gonna automatically drop one of for you. Uh, that's the case uh, if we have only two cases, male or female, black or white, uh, married, non-married, uni membership, non-uni membership, two cases. Now let's make it more complicated. Suppose uh, we have a categorical variable takes, let's say, four cases. For example, seasons. Seasons, we have spring, summer, fall, and winter, right? We have four categories. Now, same thing. We can create four dummy variables, right? The first dummy variable for spring, second dummy variable for summer, third variable for fall, fourth variable for winter, right? Same thing. Do not include all four dummy variable in our regression because we cannot do that. If you include all four, again, we're gonna fall into the dummy variable trap, right? We're gonna violate the assumption five, perfect multicollinearity, right? Then what shall we do? Very simple, just omit one of them. Which one to omit? Whichever you like, right? For example, for example, let's omit the first one. If you omit spring, 
then we can run a regression fall a sales because summer, fall, and a winter, right? So run such a regression. Now the tricky part is uh, how do we interpret the coefficient of beta one, beta two, beta three? Let me illustrate uh, how do we illustrate these numbers, beta one, beta two, beta three. Actually, also very, very simple. In this case, What's the idea, what's the meaning of uh, beta one, for example? Beta one, let me, let me make up some numbers to illustrate. Uh, suppose I say alpha is say 100 and uh, beta one is say positive 10. Beta two, let's say negative five. Uh, beta three, let's say, uh, um, Orange, um, say 20, something like this. Now, what's the meaning of these uh, beta one, beta two, beta three? Very simple. Let's start with a benchmark. Wh which one is benchmark? Very simple. The omitted group will be always our benchmark so that later on, everybody can compare with what is our benchmark. So again, the omitted group will be our benchmark. In our regression, we have summer, we have fall, we have winter, right? We omit the first one, we omit spring, right? <laughs> so that for spring, if we if we are talking about spring season, right? So summer is false, fall is also false, winter is also false. In other words, summer is a zero, fall is a zero, winter is zero, right? So that if you plug in zero, zero, and a zero, the sales for spring, the first season, is simply alpha, which is $100, right? So for, for benchmark spring, the omit, again, the omitted group spring is our benchmark, right? Benchmark is, is simply our intercept 100, right, alpha. So for spring, benchmark sales is $100, right? Then how about other seasons? For example, if we are talking about summer, then summer right here turns on to be one. Right? Summer right here turn on to be one. And the fall zero. Winter zero. They they two not true, right? It's one, zero, and a zero, right? So that this equation, sales for summer is 100 plus 10, right? So the sales for summer is 100 plus 10, which is one, one, zero, right? <laughs> Equivalently, you can say, how to interpret this beta one? Beta one, 10. 10 actually is a difference. 10 is a difference between summer and the spring, right? Summer is $10 higher than benchmark, you know, spring, right? So the number beta one right here, 10 is a difference between summer and the benchmark spring. Again, which one is benchmark? The omitted group is a benchmark, right? So if the coefficient right here is 10, 10 is a difference between summer and uh, benchmark spring, right? So similarly, for fall, for fall, if we are talking about fall season, then fall turns on to be one. So it's a zero, one, and a zero, right? So for fall, sales must be 100, minus five, right? So sales for, for fall season, of course, it's a 95, right? But we care about the coefficient beta two right here, negative, negative five. How do we interpret the coefficient negative five? Negative five is a difference between fall and the benchmark spring. In other words, fall, the sales for fall is $5 lower than benchmark spring. Right? Everybody compare with a benchmark, right? <laughs> Finally, 20 simply means winter. Winter is $20 higher than benchmark, right? So that similarly, if you want to draw a graph, it's something like, uh, let me draw it very quickly. Uh, there is a rectangle right here. So the height for, uh, Spring is benchmark, which is 100. And the summer is a little bit higher. It's 110, right? Fall, it's $5 lower than benchmark. It's a little bit lower. It's 95, right? 
And finally, winter is $20 higher than benchmark. It's 120. So let me type the numbers right here. Benchmark, 100. Uh, summer is one, one zero. Fall must be 95. Finally, winter is 120, right? If you plot a bar chart, if you plot a bar chart, there must be something like this, spring, summer, fall, and winter, right? So these numbers, 10, negative 5, 20, they are the difference. Everybody compare what is the benchmark. The benchmark spring is the benchmark. So basically, we are drawing a line. Let me draw a line. We are drawing a line at the benchmark right here, right? So everybody compare what's this benchmark. So the summer compared to spring is $10 higher, right? And fall is $5 lower, right? Winter is $20 higher, right? So that's why everybody compare what's this benchmark. Which one is benchmark? The omitted group is our benchmark. That's idea. Actually, this is also true for the for the for the case we, we discussed just now. For example, if you got a coefficient right here, if the coefficient for male is ten dollars, same thing. It means male is ten dollars higher than benchmark. Which one is bench benchmark? The omitted group, the other group, right? Male, male is ten dollars higher than benchmark female, right? <laughs> same thing. Similarly, the second equation, it means female is $10 lower than benchmark. The omitted group, the other group is the benchmark, right? So uh, this kind of interpretation actually also applies to the one, uh, the two cases, you know, two category cases, right? So uh, basically in short, everybody compare what is the benchmark, right? And so no matter if we have two cases or three cases, four cases, everybody compares versus of the benchmark. So in my example, I use the first season as benchmark. If you like, you can definitely use a whichever you like. For example, you can also use a winter. You can use winter as benchmark. In other words, you can omit winter so that run the regression sales over spring, summer, and fall, right? So that you can, you know, you can get the corresponding coefficient. The coefficient of those numbers, uh, you know, it must be the difference. Everybody compare what says winter, how much higher, how much lower, right? So that, that's basically the coefficient. Uh, similarly, uh, for years, suppose in your data set, you have year 1991, 92, 93, and 2000. Similarly, you can create dummy variable for each year. So that you can you can create uh, how many of them it must be ten of them right? <laughs> right you can create ten year dummies right but you can only include nine dummy variables into your regression right for example you you have to omit one of them which one to omit anyone right for example you can omit the first one omit ninety one dummy. So everybody compare what is 91, right? So that you know, for example, year 1992, how much lower or higher than 91. 93 compared to 91. 94 compared to 91. Everybody compare what is 91, right? Everybody compare what is the benchmark group. So that's why naturally, usually, usually we omit the first one or omit the very last one to use, you know, to choose our benchmark, right? To make it easier to compare with this. Uh, that's uh, how to interpret our coefficient beta. Any questions so far? If you're clear about this, I'm going to make it more complicated.